Hey friends, this is the Miss of Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and it's time to do some mending. This is a poncho that I bought for Howie years ago. And it has developed a couple of holes. And he loves this poncho um, for when we go to outdoor concerts, actually. So let's see what we can do about it. Now, unfortunately, I did not record the building of the foundation. You basically do the exact same thing we did with the king size sheet. We, we, we start back where the fabric is the strongest and we start weaving through that fabric to build a foundation for our patch. So again, just like our king size sheet, I'm just going to weave back and forth building a lattice base cross but you don't want to start and try and weave at the weakest point you want to back off and weave at a stronger point so that when it comes time to the weaker point you've already got a base of stability and operation right I actually kind of like having this brown line in here so that I can it tells me where to start and stop. You don't want to pull it too tight. We're not sewing this closed. We're making, we're weaving it. Gracie, stop it. Okay. And if you can see it, you got to try and keep your weaving opposite of the stitches prior. Even the, the faintest stitch is a stitch to try and grab onto. across the opening. Don't try and grab anything that isn't there to grab or else you're just going to have a big old pucker. Somebody asked me if they could, after seeing the darning of the, the king size sheet video, they asked me, could that be done with the denim? And I said, of course it could be. It can be done with any fabric as long as it's like woven even if it doesn't look like there's any any stitch there to grab believe it or not finding what you can to grab onto only strengthens the fabric. You got to keep the same tension across all of your ladder fabric. I call it ladder fabric because we're kind of, whoops, I call it ladder fabric because as you're building it, it looks like a ladder. 
Okay, now it may look solid here, but it's still really thin. So I'm going to continue to go across, strengthening the fabric all the way to the point where the fabric is already strong. Okay, your fabric weaving is only as strong as the fabric you weave it to. So you want to make sure you get it all the way to a place where the fabric itself is strong. Okay, I think one more across and then we can start our working our way down. And if I look awkward, it's because yes, I'm sewing with my left hand. So it is a little bit awkward. I am slightly ambidextrous, but not totally. Back down. You don't want to cut your thread, if, uh, your yarn, if you don't need to. So always, you know, give yourself a long enough piece that you can work with without tangling, but that you don't have to uh, replace too often because the more loose ends you have, the weaker your work will be. Okay, this little tail was left here so that I would remember where I started. And I'm actually going to going to take the tail where I started and the yarn I'm working with right now and I'm going to actually tie that into a knot. Okay, so I'm just going to snip that tail off. And then I'm just going to continue to weave back up from here. The next part over. Now, if this part of the fabric's really strong, you can do a loose weave. But seriously, if the fabric is weak, don't, don't short the integrity of your finished product by shorting yourself on stitches. But you don't want it too thick of a patch either. But if I had, didn't have to move the camera and I sped this up, you would actually start to see this hole in the fabric beginning to disappear right before your eyes. All the way, you can feel it all, all the way down to where the fabric is still at the weakest point. But this is where you can see the knot. This is where we started. So we are now in the right place to work our way back up. Now here is, again, we're working our way into pre-damaged fabric that we have built a ladder of stitching across. So now you want to pay closer attention to your over under pattern with your needle. I am using a blunt darning needle. A sharper one might have been better, but, and I'm thinking my yarn should have been longer as well. This may seem like a tedious waste of time for a lot of people, but in this disposable society, especially something like this that I bought as a Christmas gift. Do you know how he was wearing this when, when he got mistaken for Burton Cummings, for God's sake? You really want to be paying attention to where you're working because we're starting to actually lose sight of our work here. So now I am going to start way up here. And just make two stitches like this. And then I'm just going to tie this yarn. Not tight. You don't need a pucker, but just enough that we know that that's where we were. And that we know we tied up a loose end. Right? Okay. Now, where was our last? That was over. That's right. Again, if you're paying close attention to your over-under pattern from the previous stitch, 
you will be able to create a nice tight weave that doesn't look repaired unless you really give it a close inspection. Okay, now I'm going to go back and start filling in the gaps from before and then I'll do one more patch down and that should be that. Now, other than the fact that <clears throat> there's an animal pattern here that, you know, might be a little, you, you can tell that this has been repaired just because of the color differences, but I'm going to say that's not, that's not bad at all. Hang on. Let me see. Yeah, we still got to do a couple more tighter weave in the, uh, warp or weft one way is warp the other way is weft don't ask me which is which all i know is that i can go inch by bleeding inch or stitch by lovely oh stitch. yeah that's beautiful awesome all right you know what i'm gonna color this done i'm gonna put one more yeah, every time I say I'm done, I find one more place that I just want to reinforce just a little bit more. But you know what? It only makes it better. You can overdo the reinforcements and make a really thick, ugly patch. But what we want... Oops. Considering I used a fat, um, yarn that was pretty much black... I'm going to say that this is good to go. I'm just going to bring this up here, tie it off to the little tail that I left behind at the beginning of this side, and snip. And there it is. Like I said, other than the fact that there's a white spot missing right here, I'm going to say that's a pretty good patch. All right, there's your poncho. I've explained to everybody how I got it for you for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you wear it to outdoor concerts. Well, I know it's on a shoulder. Right there. So you found it's good, it. good, though. But this gave it away. Yeah, I knew where it was. <laughs> no, very nice. Good. Awesome. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you approved my handiwork. Excellent.
I'm afraid it might have been a mouse in the coach that did the damage. Probably. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying knowing how to mend a garment can save you a lot of money, especially in today's disposable society. Just because you can buy something cheap at the store doesn't make it economical. Take care. God bless.